Welcome into sports, everybody. Greetings from here in Dallas. Caden McFarland alongside Dan Lindblad here inside the Cotton Bowl, the 120th plane of the Red River rivalry. OU and Texas were in the end zone here in the Cotton Bowl. A part of the field, the Sooners offense yeah. sadly did not visit today. Brent Venables has done a fantastic job fixing that OU defense mm -hmm. that was a problem for about a decade. Check that off the list. However, that Sooners offense badly in need of repair right now, Dan. Yeah, it's in all kind of disarray. And it's not even the fact that Michael Hawkins Jr. is starting this game as a true freshman. You thought he might come in sorry. I'd they tried to make him comfortable. They sure. were doing short routes. I think only once did they actually try a deep pass, and it was in the first quarter to J.J. Hester, incomplete. The rest of the game, it felt like he was just scrambling around, yeah. and it felt like he was throwing more out-of-bounds throw away to protect himself than he was looking for guys down the field. Helpless, hapless, whatever yeah. word you want to use. The final score, Texas 34, Oklahoma 3. That offense is a problem. Any one thing that we can hang our hat on? I mean, obviously, we're not – we haven't been <laughs> – very good, uh, you know, this season, and um, we got to get better everywhere. It's been inconsistent, um, and that starts with me, so I'll be the first to say it. Uh, I, I got to get better, and we're putting them in better uh, situations to be successful, obviously. Could have gotten to do it better and just lead my team in a better way. And just um, the biggest thing for me is just coming back with a harder and my mindset of working and leading my team when things go left. So just getting to adversity. The sights and sounds unlike anything else in college football. A hot day, one of the hottest in the history of this rivalry. First quarter, the Sooners defense was fantastic. Opening drive, Billy Bowman with the interception. There were four three and outs for the Texas offense in the first half. Quinn Ewers looked unsettled, but Dan, biggest play of the game. Near the end of the first half, Texas leading 7-3. Yeah, and at that point, OU was still very much in this ball game. But Quintrevian Wisner looks like he's about to score. Ball is punched out by Broken Arrow native Robert Spears Jennings. Could have gone out of bounds for a touchback. OU hoping for anything but this. Silas Bolden jumps on it, and it is a Texas touchdown. And all of a sudden, what could have been 7-3, looking like OU had the ball, it is now 14-3 Texas. We worked on that all week today. I mean, all week this last week, and it just happened. And I seen Danny running for it, but then I seen, uh, I think it was number five or somebody ran out of nowhere and just jumped on the ball. You know, you create your own breaks, you know, by effort, by toughness, by being in the right place. You know, that's just the way it rolls sometimes. For us on defense, you know, we, we've got to take responsibility for that. Two turnovers to end the half. Michael Hawkins a fumble, Taylor Tatum a fumble. It was 23 Texas at the half. And they go on to win this thing easily, 34-3. As we said, eventually the dam broke for that Sooners defense, and the offense simply had no answers all day long. Just us beating ourselves. That's just been uh, a struggle with us right now. It's just us beating ourselves, and we got to watch the film, own it, take the coaching, and just get better. It gets frustrating for everyone. And so, um, listen, it's, it's a great group. They work extremely hard. Um, eventually, you got to we all got to carry that execution over into the game plan, and, and, and on Saturdays you got to be able to perform at a high level. And, um, for whatever reason, we haven't been able to do that yet. We don't really worry about the offense on defensive side. We just worry about getting stops. If we can get three and outs and give the offense more possessions to try to score, then we're doing our job. Brent, does it alarm you the difference that suddenly has come up between uh, your t your program, your team, and Texas? Is it is it alarming? Does it alarm you that the all, the difference that seems to be? Yeah, I don't form. know. I don't know if it harms us. Jackson Arnold was seen warming up along the sideline multiple times. Never did make it into the ball game. Brent Venables asked about that afterwards. At any point, did you consider making a change at quarterback? No. Dan, the sobering truth here, as great as the improvement on the defensive side has yep. been, as great as the recruiting has gone under Brent Venables, this is season three. Last year's Red River game was a thriller. The high point of his tenure as Sooners head coach. But now in two of the three Red River games, the biggest game this team plays every year, they have been boat raced. Hasn't even been close. And now in year three, it feels like it's back to square one in some ways. Yeah, and it's, again, stagnancy about the offense, right? They had three drives that went for negative yards. Yeah. Only two drives went for more than 20 yards. That's That can't happen, in a, especially in a huge game like this. Yeah. And it is just shocking to see where this team has come from with the Kylers, with the Jalen Hurts, with the Bacon, Baker Mayfield. They put up 40 points like it was nothing in this building, and now a touchdown seems far-fetched. And there's a lot of soul-searching left to do because South Carolina, who played Alabama yeah. tough. Yeah, one of the best to, defenses in the country, right, the Gamecocks have. Comes to your building, and you got to be ready for what will be an early afternoon, yeah. noon kickoff. One of the few games you have left against teams that are unranked. And now these become must-win games. Sooners are 4-2. and two. 
one and two in SEC play, and I would highly recommend they find a way to beat those Gamecocks yeah, next week need it. because things get really uncomfortable afterwards the rest of the way if they fall to four and three. For Dan, Caden, that is it for sports from here in Dallas. We'll be back with more right after this.